You wake up in the morning, and there are two possible versions of you waiting at the edge of the day. One version grabs the phone immediately. Before you even stretch, before you even take a breath, your thumb is already scrolling. Notifications pop up, tiny hits of excitement, tiny hits of stress, tiny hits of comparison. Your brain is reacting before you're even awake. The reward system is already overstimulated, already jittery, already thrown off balance. Then there's the second version of you, the version that wakes up slow with a bit of clarity. You take a breath before anything else. You sit up. You feel grounded. You feel like you know what you want to do with your day instead of reacting to what everyone else is doing. Two versions of the same person, same life, same challenges, but very different mornings. And the difference comes down to one thing, dopamine. Not motivation as an idea, not willpower, not discipline, dopamine. The molecule that quietly controls how much effort you can generate, how much pleasure you feel, what you crave, what you pursue, and how satisfied you feel when you get it. Today, we're breaking down the real neuroscience behind dopamine, how it works, how addiction hijacks it, and why sobriety restores it in ways that can completely change your life. No gimmicks, no hype, just the science and the practical truth. And by the end of this episode, you'll understand exactly why removing alcohol doesn't just make you healthier, it frees up your brain's entire motivational system. It lets you feel clarity again. It lets you feel drive again. It lets you access a version of yourself that you may not have met in a long time. So stay with me. Because once you understand how dopamine actually works, a lot of things about craving, relapse, focus, and motivation suddenly make sense. What dopamine actually is. Welcome to NeuroSober. Let's start by clearing up the biggest misconception about dopamine. Dopamine is not a pleasure chemical. It's not the chemical that makes you feel high. It's not the chemical that makes you feel good. Dopamine is the chemical that pushes you toward things. It drives pursuit, curiosity, initiative, effort, craving, anticipation. It tells your brain, that's important, go after it. Now, this system works on something called baseline dopamine. Think of it like the background level that your brain maintains throughout the day. That baseline shapes how motivated you feel, how optimistic you are, how patient you are, how willing you are to start tasks, and even how able you are to feel hope. When something exciting happens, something pleasurable, rewarding, stimulating, dopamine spikes above that baseline. And that spike feels good, yes, but it's the contrast between the baseline and the spike that creates that feeling, not the spike by itself. Here's the problem. After every spike, dopamine doesn't return neatly to the baseline it dips below the baseline first. That temporary drop is the crash you feel after scrolling, after binging, after drinking, after any habit that gives you fast stimulation. Now, in a healthy brain, that drop is small and temporary. You rebound, the system resets. But when you repeatedly push the dopamine system with substances, alcohol, cocaine, nicotine, porn, stimulants, and heavily processed foods, your brain adjusts. It tries to protect itself from overstimulation by lowering the baseline and reducing its sensitivity. And that's where addiction begins. Addiction is not primarily about the substance. Addiction is the collapse of the dopamine system itself. The two dopamine pathways and why addiction hijacks them. Your dopamine system runs on two major circuits and both matter in sobriety. Before we continue, I want to share a tool that pairs perfectly with everything we talk about on this channel. It is a free quiz that helps you identify the hidden blocks that keep you from creating the life that you want. Most people think manifestation is about wishing or hoping. In reality, it is about the brain, your beliefs, your attention, and the emotional patterns wired into your nervous system decide what you attract. This quiz shows you what is getting in the way 
It breaks down the specific mindset patterns that limit your progress. It gives you clarity on your internal roadblocks and teaches you how to shift them so you can actually move forward. It takes less than two minutes. If you want to understand what is stopping you from activating the law of attraction in your life, this is the fastest place to start. You can try it using the link below. It helps support the channel at no extra cost to you. Take the quiz, get your results, and start removing the blocks that are holding you back. Now let's get back to it. The first one is the mesocorticolimbic pathway, the motivation and reward pathway. This pathway connects three major parts of your brain, the ventral tegmental area, or VTA, the nucleus accumbens, and the prefrontal cortex. This circuit is the one that tells you, I want that, I should do that, go get that, this matters. This is also the pathway that addiction hijacks first. When you drink, or use, or binge anything highly stimulating, this pathway gets an artificial surge of dopamine, a surge bigger than normal life can produce. And your brain remembers that. It says, this must be important for survival. And gradually, the brain begins to prioritize the substance over natural rewards, relationships, responsibilities, passions, and goals. But there's a second dopamine circuit that people rarely talk about. The mid-grostriatal pathway. This is the movement pathway. It controls initiation and fluidity of movement, and the ability to get your body into action. It's the pathway damaged in Parkinson's disease. Why does this matter for addiction? Because when people say, I feel stuck, I feel frozen, I know what I should do, but I can't get myself to do it. That's not just an emotional description. It's biochemical. Low dopamine literally makes it harder to move. That's why early sobriety can feel like you're dragging your body through mud. It's not laziness. It's not personality. It's the dopamine movement connection. Addiction damages motivation and movement at the same time. The rebound drop after a dopamine spike. Here's the part most people never hear. Dopamine spikes always lead to dopamine crashes. Always. There is no exception to this rule. Chocolate. Mild spike, mild crash. Scrolling, mild spike, mild crash. Sex, bigger spike, noticeable drop. Cocaine and meth, massive spike, brutal crash. Alcohol, a chaotic cycle, unpredictable spikes, unpredictable lows. The stronger the spike, the deeper the crash. And the deeper the crash, the lower the baseline becomes over time. This is how addiction forms. This is how tolerance forms. This is how motivation collapses. The brain recalibrates itself around artificial stimulation. Real life stops feeling rewarding because the baseline is too low to register normal pleasure. This is why early sobriety feels flat. Not because sobriety is boring, but because the dopamine system is rebooting. Your receptors are resetting. Your baseline is climbing back up. Your brain is learning how to find reward in normal life again. It takes time, but the system does recover. How alcohol disrupts dopamine and motivation. Alcohol interferes with dopamine in three major ways. One, it lowers your baseline. You get a short-term bump in dopamine early in a drinking session. But as alcohol metabolizes, cortisol rises, glutamate spikes, and GABA drops. When that happens, your dopamine baseline crashes. That Monday morning dread, that Sunday anxiety, that I don't want to do anything feeling after drinking, that's not personality, that's neurochemistry. Two, alcohol creates unstable dopamine cycling. Unlike cocaine or nicotine, which produce consistent patterns, alcohol is unpredictable. Every drink can affect the brain differently. The uncertainty confuses the reward system, making motivation harder to build. The brain can't form stable habits when reward is unstable. 3. Alcohol downregulates dopamine receptors. Over time, your brain becomes less responsive to dopamine in general. So drinking stops feeling good. And life without drinking feels even more dull. 
Sobriety reverses all of this, but the recovery process has to be understood. Cold exposure and the dopamine reset. Cold exposure is one of those things people hear about and think, there's no way something that simple works. But the science behind it is shockingly strong. When you immerse yourself in cold water, whether it's a cold shower or an ice bath, your body responds with a surge in neurochemistry. And not the kind that burns out your dopamine system. The opposite. There's a landmark study showing that cold exposure can raise dopamine by up to 250% above baseline. And what makes it even more interesting is how long it lasts. Instead of the quick spike and fast crash you get from alcohol, cold exposure creates a slow, steady elevation. It keeps you alert, focused, and emotionally stable for hours afterward. People in recovery talk about this a lot. They say cold exposure makes them feel awake again, alive again, like their brain finally switched back on after years of running on low power mode. And that makes sense because cold exposure trains the nervous system to activate without pushing it into panic. You feel this blend of calm and energy at the same time. It's not adrenaline chaos. It's controlled activation. It's not artificial pleasure. It's natural readiness. That's what a healthy dopamine spike looks like. One that strengthens the baseline instead of destroying it. And for anyone trying to rebuild their life after alcohol, this becomes one of the most powerful tools you can add to your routine. Not because it's trendy, but because it restores the brain's ability to create motivation without depending on substances. Why dopamine recovery makes you feel like you are waking up. When you stop drinking, there's a moment, sometimes a few days in, sometimes a few weeks, where you suddenly feel like your brain is coming back online. Colors look sharper. You laugh more easily. You remember things. You notice small details you used to miss. And for a lot of people, it feels almost surreal. Like you're stepping back into a version of yourself you haven't seen in years. This isn't magic. It's dopamine recovery. Alcohol suppresses the reward pathways. It dulls receptors. It flattens the baseline. Over time, your brain stops working as it was designed to. You don't feel motivated. You don't feel excited. You don't feel much of anything unless you drink. But when sobriety kicks in, the repairing begins. Your receptors start to wake back up. Your baseline starts to stabilize. Those tiny bursts of motivation that alcohol used to steal begin to return. And because your brain has been quiet for so long, the return of natural reward feels like waking up from a fog. People expect sobriety to remove pleasure, but neuroscience actually shows the opposite. Sobriety brings pleasure back. Real pleasure. Not the artificial rush you get from alcohol, but the kind that comes from being present and alive. This is why you start enjoying simple things again. Music hits differently. Conversations feel richer. Your energy isn't fake, it's stable. And slowly, the world stops feeling distant. It starts feeling yours again. How to build a healthy dopamine system in sobriety. If you want a dopamine system that supports your life instead of controlling it, there are a few principles that make all the difference. One, protect your baseline. This is the foundation. Avoid stacking dopamine sources on top of each other. No scrolling while you eat. No combining caffeine with endless stimulation. And don't replace alcohol with sugar or impulsive behaviors. These things confuse your reward system and keep your baseline unstable. Two, introduce healthy peaks. Your brain needs peaks. It needs bursts of activation. Just make them the right kind. Cold exposure, intentional exercise, breath work, learning something new, taking on a challenge that stretches you. These activities raise dopamine without burning the systems out. Three, build sobriety-based pursuit loops. The brain is wired for pursuit. It needs something to chase. Alcohol used to be that chase. Now, you get to choose something else. Skill building, a fitness goal, a creative project, a career step, service to others. 
real connection. When your brain pursues something meaningful, dopamine becomes a tool instead of a trap. Four, understand your waves. Motivation in sobriety doesn't stay perfectly high. It rises and falls because the dopamine system is stabilizing. This isn't a sign of weakness. It's the brain adjusting. When you feel a dip, don't panic. Don't assume you're failing. Ride it like a wave. It passes, and every cycle strengthens your system a bit more. These four pillars aren't quick hacks. They're long-term rewiring strategies. Over time, they rebuild a dopamine system that supports clarity and genuine satisfaction. Final message. If you're struggling, remember this. You are not broken and you're not weak. Your addiction never came from a lack of discipline. It came from alcohol hijacking the very molecule your brain uses to push you forward in life. Sobriety isn't about losing pleasure. It's about getting your real pleasure system back. It's the return of genuine joy, steady motivation, clear thinking, and the ability to pursue meaning without shortcuts that drain you. When you learn to guide your dopamine instead of letting alcohol control it, everything changes. You reclaim your direction. You reclaim yourself. See you in the next one. Stay on top of Nero sobriety. If you like this video, give us a like. And if you subscribe to the idea of a healthier, more sober you, subscribe now.